Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsglobe.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the dplyr package in R. So in the video I'm going to show you several examples and all of these examples rely on the data frame that we can create in lines 1, 2, 3 of this code. So if you run these lines of code you will see that at the top right of RStudio a new data object appears. And we can also have a look at this data object by running line four of the code. And then you will see here at the bottom in the RStudio console that our example data contains six rows and three columns. Now, if we want to use the functions of the dplyr package, we also need to install and load the dplyr package. And uh, this is what we can do with lines six and seven of our code. I have installed the package already, so I'm just going to load it with line 7 of the code. And after running this line of code, we will be able to use the functions of the dplyr package. Now, in the first example, I want to show you how to use the arrange function. And the arrange function is used to order the rows of a data frame according to a certain column of the data frame. So in this case, I'm going to sort our data um, based on the column X3. So if you run this line of code, you will see that a new data frame appears at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this time the rows of the data frame are ordered alphabetically according to the column X3. In the next example, I want to show you how to apply the filter function. And you can see this example in line 11 of the code. And the filter function is taking a subset of our data based on a logical condition. So in this case, uh, in this example, I'm going to take a subset only for rows where the column X2 is equal to the value 2. So if you run this line of code, you will see that another data frame is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this time, uh, this data frame is a subset of our original data. And this subset is only containing rows where the column X2 is equal to 2. In the next example, I want to show you how to apply the mutate function. And the mutate function is converting already existing variables of our data frame into a new variable. So in this example, I'm going to create a new variable x4. And uh, this variable will contain the sum of our columns x1 and x2. So if you run this line of code, you will see that uh, another data object is appearing at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this data frame contains the three columns of our original data. And in addition to that, a fourth column x4 which is containing the sum of the columns x1 and x2. In the next example I want to show you how to use the pull function of the dplyr package and the pull function is extracting one column of our data frame and converts this column into a vector. So let's assume that we want to extract the column x2 from our data frame then we can use the code here of line 15. And if you run this line of code, you will see that the values of our column X2 are returned to the RStudio console. In the next example, in line 17, I want to show you how to use the rename function of the dplyr package. And the rename function is used to change the names of the columns of our data frame. So in this case, I want to change the name of our column X3 into a new name. So if you run this line of code, then you can see that this data frame here contains exactly the same values as our original data frame. But in this case, the variable X3 was renamed into the name new name. In the next example, I want to show you how to use the sample n function. And the, the sample m function is randomly taking a subsample from our original data frame. And since we are going to take a random subset of our data frame, 
it makes a lot of sense to set a seed um, before we apply the sample n function because this seed ensures that um, you can reproduce the code as I'm showing here in the video. So if you run this line of code, our seed is set to 765. And now we can run the sample n function, as you can see in line 20 of the code. So in this case, we are specifying within the function that we want to randomly sample three rows of our original data frame. So if you run this line of code, you can see that exactly three rows of our original data frame are returned. Yeah, and in the last example of this video, I want to show you how to use the select function of the dplyr package. And the select function is used to take a subset of columns of our original data frame. So in this example, I'm uh, extracting the columns x2 and x3. So if you run this line of code, you can see that uh, only the columns x2 and x3 are returned in a new data frame to the RStudio console. Yes, yeah, so as you have seen in this video, the dplyr package is a very powerful package for the manipulation of data. However, in this video, I have shown you only some of the functions that are provided by the dplyr package. So if you want to learn more about the dplyr package in R, then you could check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on the homepage, I have recently published an extensive tutorial on the dplyr package. And in this tutorial, I'm explaining the code of this video in some more detail. And I'm also showing you much more examples on the functions of the dplyr package. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of this video, so you could check it out there. And furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me a comment with some feedback. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to get notifications in future whenever I'm releasing new R tutorials. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.